this time. And hell, we've got to send us something out there, all right? Close in by the sound of them. Damn wild dogs out the swamp. Let's get them. Shut your choppers, you flea flacking fat laps. Oh, sweet Jesus. It's Ellie Barefoot, Bob. Ellie Barefoot? Yeah. You dead? Anything dead would be stinking by now. Wild dogs got themselves a taste of human blood. Ain't nobody gonna be safe out in the houses. We get together and whack off the island. You go call the sheriff. Yes, Paul. All right, what can anyone tell me about it? Well, young Tom, here he come on her first. How'd the rest of you get here so fast? Brad and Scully was at the gas station when I called you, sir. We came on the park driving back here. Who else knows about it? Only Preacher Biggers. I called him after I called you. What for? Well, I figured somebody ought to tell her brother what happened to her. Preacher Biggers is the only one in Frenchtown got a telephone. Well, we're lucky you don't have a whole pocket full of dimes, are we? Well, don't the family got a right to know? It's up to the authorities. Now, Ellie and Lawrence, poor fool, got a father next to death. He hears about something like this, and there's gonna be two dead bodies. Is that what you want? I guess not. Well, what can you tell me, Doc? Right now? Only that it's not considered good medical practice to perform autopsies in the middle of swamps, surrounded by howling dogs and scratching rustics. I uh, want the remains moved to the hospital as soon as you can arrange it. Do you think that can be accomplished by the neighborhood clods without completely obliterating any chance there might be of determining cause of death? Anybody know how it happened, Sheriff Whitaker? Did you bring him here, Reverend? He just stole my car and come anyway, Sheriff. This couldn't be done by a human person. Take your hands off me, mister. Now, you hold on to your manners, boy. Oh, you got a death All right, let's hold it. Just hold it. Now, you go on home with the Reverend. Wait for me. Go on. Go on. Now, you two boys help the doctor with the body. Now, and the rest of you, get out of here. I want to look around by myself. Go on, get. Come on, Lawrence. Come on. He thinks someone murdered her. Well, what do you think? Wild dogs do it to her? Tell me what you mean by do it. Dogs might very well have done something to her. There were bite marks. Well, then they killed her. 
You show me a pack of dogs where one of them knows how to hit you on the side of the head and knock you unconscious, and I'll sign a death certificate saying she was killed by dogs. Something struck her. Someone struck her. With enough force either to kill her outright or to render her sufficiently senseless to be dragged out into that field and left for the dogs to finish off. Find someone strong enough to do that with his left hand, and you'll have who did it. Left hand? The mark was along here. That's where a left-handed person would strike you if you were facing him. You've got a murder, Sheriff. <laughs> Come in if you'd allow it. Hi, Lawrence. You feeling better? Did you find out who did it to her? How's your father? Does he know about it? I just phased him. Do you want to pay your greetings? That'll pleasure me. What's he saying? What he's been saying ever since Ellie was killed. Uh, Hugh, what are you saying, Hugh? Jolie, Penny, the look at Yeah. What was he talking about? I don't know French. What's a lucaru? I don't know. Well, you speak French. Never heard that word before. First time I heard that word was when I come back from where they found Ellie. Did he know about Ellie? Yeah, he knows. Who told him? Nobody told him. Well, then how does he know? Well, I can't tell you that. He's been talking like that ever since I got back. Talking about his pretty Ellie, his little girl, sweet daughter, and the Lucaroo. He knows. Somehow he knows without anybody telling him. Nah, it doesn't make any sense. He's just got crazy things going on in his head because he's old and sick. Let's talk about what's going on in your head. Well, you know what's going on in my head. I want to know what got it going. It wasn't wild dogs that killed Ellie. Now, how do you know that? She was having trouble. What kind of trouble? With a man. Now, who? I don't know who. Wasn't anybody from down here on the bayou. Somebody up on Pecan Hill. Some other Marsh Island snobbery. Well, how'd you know? She'd tell you that? She didn't tell me anything. That's how I know. We was good friends. She used to tell me everything. Then suddenly she just... shut up tight. Wouldn't talk a word to me. That's how it was last night when she was ironing her dress and brushing out her hair. I asked her. She wouldn't say. I know. Don't you worry about that. How'd you know there was trouble between them? You said there was trouble. I could read her face like a newspaper. Something had gone wrong. Something bad. I tried to find out what it was. She wouldn't tell me. She just sassed me. Told me to shut my mouth and gut a French. Well, what'd you do? 
Well, I hit her. How hard? Well, hard enough to let her know what I thought about her letting the... quality put their fat fingers all over her. Go on, show me how hard you hit her. Show me how you hit her. Go on, show me. Now, I've known you for 10 years. I never knew you were left-handed. Mr. Rodan. Good morning, Sheriff. How are you? Is there something I can do for you? Well, I just uh, came by. I guess you heard about Deli Burafu. Yes, I did hear, Sheriff. It's a terrible thing to happen. Come on, let's sit on the gallery. Is it true they discovered her body just the other side of our grove? Yeah. Right near the Grumandy place. Have you any idea who might have done it? Well, we don't know much yet. I was just trying to trace where she went after she left the house before she got to the marshes. She could have come along uh, the Con Hill Road, or uh, maybe she took a shortcut across the bayou. I was half wondering if you might have been outside between 8 and 12 and noticed her pass by. Oh, I'm afraid not, Sheriff. I wasn't being a very happy man about that time last night. Oh? Yes, I was doing battle with a, another bout of malaria. There was a time there when I thought my shaking was going to bring the whole house down around my ears, but it uh, finally passed off around one or two, and I slept the rest of the night like a dead man. Andrew? We're just about ready for lunch. Uh, Miss Rodan, I didn't know you'd return to Marsh Island. Just a couple of hours ago, I met a plane in New Orleans. I guess you don't remember me. You're Aaron Whitaker. I remember you very well. When did you meet Sheriff Whitaker, Louise? Well, he wasn't sheriff then, Andrew. He was just plain Aaron Whitaker, and he was too big to hit me in junior high. <laughs> and I had this terrible crush on him. Louise. You probably didn't know a single thing about that, did you? Well, I wish I had. We could have compared them. Compared what? Crushes. I had one on you, too. <laughs> well, why ever didn't you say something about it? To a Rodan? Well, we're human, aren't we? I mean, practically, aren't we, Andrew, like anybody else? Even though we're a fine old family and settled Marsh Island and all that, even though there's always been a row dance living in this great old house here, even though you can't keep it warm when it's cold out, cool when it's hot, or dry when the rain's filtering in through the cracks. Uh, Louise. Well, it's true, isn't it? At least it was five years ago when I left. Has anybody fixed the roof since then? Or put in heat? Louise, uh, Sheriff Whitaker is attending to, uh... A small matter, and I'm sure you are impatient to get on with it. Isn't that so, Sheriff? Well, it's nice seeing you again, Miss Rodanth. Well, you will come to call, won't you? Oh, I, I have to remember all the way they say things here. Come to call, is that it? Or, or pay a visit? <laughs> in New York, it's ring up, drop in, hop over. Things are much more active in New York. Uh, Louise, I'll be right along. Oh, dear, I'm talking too much. You notice that, I suppose. I'm a compulsive talker. Everybody says so. You know, it happened to me shortly after I graduated from junior high school. What a pity it didn't happen sooner. I could have mentioned that terrible crush I had on you. <laughs> oh, Andrew is staring at me. Well, goodbye, Sheriff Whitaker, and do... Uh, ring up, uh, drop in, or hop over. <laughs> well, my, that does sound energetic, doesn't it? Oh, uh, put your hat on. You're going to get a sunstroke in this climate. <laughs> I'm going, Andrew. I am going. My sister has been ill, Sheriff. That's why she's come home. Well, I hope she'll be feeling better soon. Oh, yes, yeah, she will be with a lot of rest, quiet, no excitement of any sort. Uh, what you mean is I shouldn't bother to ring up, uh, drop in, or hop over. It hadn't occurred to me you were taking the invitation seriously, Sheriff. 
I wasn't. Mr. Rodan? Sheriff? Yourself a clue, Sheriff. You know, one of you ever see this? Oh. What did the fella call it? You identified Ellie Burfu. That means you knew her. Well, we knew her, all right. She did cleaning for us a while. Back after Ma died. How long? Yeah, near about. That's before she went to work at the hospital. You have a data? Sure didn't. And telling me what you were doing the night she was killed? I was down in town to Bean Wagon. A lot of folks seen me. Yeah, when'd you get back? What'd you do? Came back around 10, went to bed, that's what. You see him? Well, I didn't get in till about 12. Well, where were you? Pictures in Leadville. Well, when you got home, did you look in to see if Tom was home? Well, Tom Jr. here's a grown man. I don't bed check him no more. Anyhow, why are you asking us things? It was wild dogs that done it, wasn't it? You seen it wasn't wild dogs? There's more than one kind. And I'll see you. Town. Oh, Hugh sent me up to the store to buy some things. Some asterisks here and some sulfur. What for? For the lookarook. For it? For to drive the lookarook away. Uh, Sir, do you know what a lookarook is? No, Sheriff, I don't, but Hugh thinks the lookarook killed Ellie, and now he's scared it's going to get Lawrence. Oh, you say that? Yes, sir. Only I'll tell you something, Sheriff. Didn't know Lucaroo kill Ellie, no matter what the old man says. And Lawrence didn't do it either. And if that's what you've been thinking. Oh, I say he had a reason, and he was left-handed. He didn't kill her, Sheriff. Don't go waste no time on Lawrence. I know that. Now, how do you know that, sir? Because I know who did kill her. Who? You find out. Wilson ever made Ellie pregnant, and you'll find out who killed her. Doc, I'm not getting any more answers out of the back of your head than I was out of the front. How come you didn't tell me Ellie was pregnant? I knew she was pregnant. I was third in my class. How come he didn't say anything? There and I was performing an autopsy to determine cause of death. Pregnancy didn't cause her death. Well, I'm not so sure. Well, I am. Doc, if she was pregnant, somebody got her that way. And that's a clear lead to, to who killed her. No. No, it isn't. Antibiotics, anyone? Uh. None at all. Because I got her pregnant. And I didn't kill her. I loved her. I guess I'll have some of your antibiotics. Sorry, this. Only one glass. I didn't say anything about needing a glass. I know what you're thinking. I think you do. Burroughs Druton, MD. FACS. 
Grandson of Senator Jefferson Drusen of Louisiana, out of his mind in love with a girl who does cleaning. Isn't that what you're thinking? Lawrence said she had a date. He didn't say who with. You know who she had a date with? Of course. Me. But she never came. I waited until I decided she wasn't going to come, then I went home. Where were you supposed to meet? Near the bottom of Pecan Hill. In the grove, across the wall from the Rodin's property. That's where we met a lot. One time in particular. Lawrence said she looked worried. She was. That's what we were going to talk about. The baby. I wanted to abort it. She wanted to marry me and have it. She wanted us to go someplace to live, somewhere else, where people wouldn't know us. I leave Marsh Island. And the hospital. And my whole life. You didn't want to. I didn't have the guts to. I'm almost 50, Aaron. Why do you start over again at 50? I wanted to go on loving her. Not having to give up anything for it. She said no. We were going to talk it out that night. But she never came. So I went home. I never saw her again. Till out there in that clearing. Torn apart. Sounds like I killed her, doesn't it? You ever see this before? Where'd you get it? And you never saw Ellie wear it. This? Ellie never owned anything like that. Okay. Aaron. I didn't kill Ellie. Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Hey, uh, Doc, what do you use sulfur and acetate for? You don't, not anymore. Well, when you used to use them, what'd you use them for? My grandmother used to claim they kept wolves away. Wolves? I see. You're not going to arrest me? You left-handed? No. Of course, whoever made that mark on Ellie could have come up from behind her and that'd make him right-handed. Maybe. I see. terribly important meeting with the town council, so I made him drive me in with him. Well, have you found out who did that awful thing to that girl yet? Not yet. Do I, do I have to call you Sheriff, the way Andrew does? Could I call you Aaron? Aaron would be fine. <laughs> well, then you've got to call me Louise. All right, thank you. I was wondering if, um... Was there something you wanted to say, Aaron? Yeah, I, I was wondering if you'd have a cup of coffee with me over at Eddie's. Well, I, I'd admire to do that very much, Aaron. You know I've never once in all my life been in this place. You know that? So now that you are, what do you think? Well, I think... I think Eddie doesn't make a very good cup of coffee. Maybe he likes something else to drink. There's not much you can do to burger. They're all staring at me now. What would they do if they saw me take a drink? Uh, hey, listen, when Eddie finds out that he had a road dance in here tomorrow, all the prices are gonna go up. <laughs> we really own this town, don't we? Well, your great-granddaddy established it. 
Oh, I know it all got drummed into me when I was just little. Your FFL child. First family of Louisiana. Don't you ever forget it, child. You know I forgot. What's everybody been saying about me coming back so suddenly after all this time? What's Andrew been telling him? Well, Andrew said you were sick. <laughs> oh, that is Andrew. He'd rather have one thought I was a terminal case or something than know the truth. You want to know the truth, Aaron? You want to know why I finally came back to the ancestral manor? Well, I can hardly say no, can I? No, I guess not after my leading you on this way. I was living with a man. That's what was happening. That's what Andrew just can't bear anyone knowing. And what is worse, the man I was living with was not socially acceptable. And what is worse? Oh, there's some word. Oh, yes, where you hear. The socially unacceptable man I had been living in sin with walked out on me. Well, I would think that Andrew would have been relieved. Oh, no, he was furious. Why, they'd had dueling. He'd have dueled him dead. You don't walk out in a row dance, even if you are living in sin with her. And I'm socially unacceptable. You know what Andrew did? <laughs> he hired some detectives, and they came to New York and found me. They packed me right back here. Well, you didn't have to go. You could have said no. He's got all the money. He had cut me off. Could have gotten a job. Doing what? There's the curse of the road dance again. All we women folk were ever taught was piano and how to talk French. <laughs> so here I am, back at the old homestead, having been saved for myself. And Andrew's running around telling everybody I've been sick. Well, I'm glad you're back. Are you, Aaron? Oh, well, I'll stop telling myself how unhappy I am because Andrew's such a stinker. Mr. Rodine, how do? Uh, afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Please, don't let me interrupt your pleasures. I've been looking all over for you, Louise. Sheriff, sure, this is where your sleuthing is taking you. Oh, Andrew, don't be so stuffy. And just invited me in here for a cup of coffee. Oh. Well, I'm much obliged to you, Sheriff, for occupying my sister while I was doing town business. I'm ready to go home now, Louise. And you ought to get some rest. You're looking a little peaked. And you remember what the doctor told you. Andrew, it's no use. I've spilled the beans to Aaron. That is right. I have told him the whole ugly truth about why I'm back in Marsh Island, so there's no point in going on and on and on about how I need rest now I've been sick and what the doctor said. I see. Well, it's uh, comforting to know that Sheriff Whitaker is not the town gossip. Sheriff, I hear it being said that Mr. Germandy and his boy are organizing a hunt for tomorrow, aiming to wipe out the wild dog population around here. Would you care to join in? We don't often get sport like that in these parts anymore. Well, I just might, Mr. Rodans. Of course, if the Germandys kill off all those wild dogs, I don't know what they're going to have to talk about the rest of their lives. Are you ready, Louise? Oh, 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 oh,
as well start thinking about him dying, Lawrence, if you aren't already. He can't last much longer. Oh. Luca Rook. Is that French, Lawrence? It's not any French I ever heard. Well, that shot will keep him quiet for a few hours. Okay. Dr. Druden. Yes, Sarah, what is it? What did you find when you examined Ellie? Just that she was murdered. Dogs didn't do it. Like I said. Well, you were right. Excuse me. Nothing else? No. Nothing. Goodbye. Nothing? Troubling you, Sarah. If he says he didn't find nothing, either he's lying about being a doctor or he's lying about what he found. Who are you talking about? If I tell you something, Lawrence, will you promise to keep your head on your neck? Hmm? What is it you're going to tell me? Promise. Sheriff, you coming on a wild dog hunt? Now you bring me a pelt, Tom. I'm disappointed you're not joining us, Sheriff. Well, somebody's got to mind the store. Good hunt. Somebody's coming this way like his being hunted. Must be old Hugh again. What is it, Lawrence? You let me back, hey, Sheriff. Lawrence, what is it? He killed my sister. Come on, grab me now. Lawrence, now cool it off. Now. It was her. She was having a baby. It was his baby. Now, Lawrence, we know you're grieving. Oh, I don't need to go around and kill you. Just stand right up there. Come on over here. Now, you all go hunt your wild dogs. Now, get out of here. Now, you come with me. Come on. Better get going with it while well, we still have the light. Well, come on in if you're not looking for clues. Well, I found the clue I was looking for. What clue? Are you? I was wondering if you were home. 
Well, where else would I be? Not shooting down dogs with the rest of the folks in these parts. Would you care for a glass of lemonade? It might cool you off. Thank you. It's mighty hot. You'd have just driven on by. Oh, I suppose so, if you hadn't stopped me. Well, why'd you just come calling like everybody else? Well, anybody just wouldn't come calling, not here. Not without an invitation. I was brought up on Marsh Island. So was I. I guess that's why nobody ever came calling. Well, have you solved your murder yet? <laughs> not quite. But do you have any suspects? Is that the word? Suspects? That's, that's the word. I got three of them. And I don't want any one of them to have done it. Now, Doc Druton's a... Well, he's the closest thing I got to a friend here in this town. And Lawrence... Lawrence was a brother. Okay. If he did it, thank you. All the folks of quality around here will... Uh, will say, see what kind of people there are down in Frenchtown. They're half foreign and everything. And if it was Tom Germandy... That'd mean there was something between Tom and Ellie. I wouldn't like to think she'd lower herself that much. I'd like to. If I'm some sheriff, aren't I? I've never heard you talk so long before. I've never heard myself keep still so long. What do you suppose that means? Well, I don't know what it means to you, but... When I feel out of place, I just, uh, shut up. When I do, I just keep talking. I guess that's what it means. I guess that's what it means. Well, I, uh, I guess you'd better drink your lemonade. Yeah. Beats me. But I'm gonna do like Aaron says. I'm gonna lock you up. Nobody's gonna be fooling around with my business. Now you be a real good boy. Sit down. I'll be right back.
Come on up. Same except for the blows. This time, whoever did it tore them both apart with his fingernails. Cover him up. Aaron, what in devil's own name is it? Well, you and the boys could have saved yourself the trouble of shooting all them dogs, man. They didn't kill Ellie or Lawrence or Don Terry. Well, who did? Dang whappers, look at them bars. You get through those bars, Tom? Sure couldn't. I don't believe you could either. So I just run out of suspects. Are you sure? Is there anything you can tell us? Yeah, three people were killed by somebody strong enough to tear out iron bars. Find somebody around here who's strong enough to do that, and you got yourself a killer. Oh, ain't nobody that strong. There are no marks of any instruments used on the bars. They were torn out by bare hands. I'll uh, send someone for the body sheriff. I'm dying. I'd like to have uh, four or five deputies for volunteers. Anyone volunteer? Well, what do you need deputies for, Aaron? Well, Ellie and Lawrence Burroughs, who were murdered by this wild man. There's only one borough who left, old Hugh. How do we know he's not next? I'm going to post a 24-hour guard down at his house. All right, I want volunteers. Yeah, I thought so. Look at what happened to that deputy of yours who's gone in Lawrence. I want me to go on out there, get myself all torn apart, guarding some old boy who's too caught dead anyhow. Ah, oh, go on home, Ollie. Go oh, on, get out of here. Go lock your door. Well, that ain't no joke, Aaron. I'm locking and I'm bolting. And I ain't feeding my dog. You catch whatever, whoever it is, run around doing them things. I've seen them bodies. Tom Jr., come on. I'm getting on home. Morning, Mr. Rodan. A little quiet, wouldn't you say, Sheriff? Uh-huh. There's probably eight or nine guns on us right now. Is that so? Well, I heard you were lacking deputies, so I thought I'd come and offer my services, if you think I qualify. Yeah, I appreciate that, but what happens when I'm supposed to give you orders? I guess you'll just have to forget who I am and remember who you are, Sheriff. Uh, come on. I'll drive you over to Hughes. I was going there myself. Thank you. 
Marsh Island was settled by my people, Sheriff. And I've never been into this part of town. You and your sister have seen a lot of new things these days. I believe you're right, Sheriff. Go this way. It appears to be just as quiet here as up in town. Twice as many eyes watching us. You seem to have a tremendous knowledge of everything that's going on around you, even when it's completely invisible. Well, I am the sheriff. Morning, sir. How's you? Oh, he seems a little weaker today, Sheriff. Good morning, sir, Mr. Rodin. You know me. Oh, yes. Won't you come in, sir? My daddy used to work for you when your granddaddy had more than a hundred hunters. Well, there's only a few of them left now, and most of them hunting for pasture land. What's that smell? What's that smell? What's wrong with him? He's had a fit. Doctor, you were third in your class. I never went to college. I knew he was having a fit when he started having it. He's had a fit and it was brought on according to what you tell me by something he smelled. Now, until he comes to, I can't say anything more. Well, have you ever had anything like this before? You've been the Marsh Island doctor for 20 years. Oh, yes, but not the Rodanth doctor. I wasn't good enough for them. They went to New Orleans. You said something about malaria. This isn't malaria. Have you got any ideas? Not until I can talk to him. If I just knew something about his medical history. Well, I'll find out for you. How? I'm the sheriff. Is he all right, Aaron? Well, the doctor says he doesn't have a temperature. And his pulse is all right. It's just as though he was sleeping it off. Sleeping what off? Whatever seized him. You ever have a fit like that before, or anyone in the family? Granddaddy used to have what they called his spells. What were they? Oh, I don't know. Please, sit down. I mean, nobody would ever talk about it. Oh, I was just little. All I remember was a lot of running around and whispering and people talking about Granddaddy having one of his spells upstairs. A long time later, I was sure they meant he'd been drinking. Well, maybe it wasn't that at all. Maybe it was the same thing your brother just had. Well, what is it, Aaron? What are you looking at? This. Well, that was my mother. She gave it to me. You know where it is? Oh, good heavens, no. Well, I mean, I, I might know if I looked for it. I left it here when I went to New York. I suppose it's around here somewhere. Why? Well, it is somewhere. Well, what are you doing with it? Is that it? Well, of course it is. Where'd you get it? I found it near where they discovered Ellie's body. She stole it? Not necessarily. Well, how else could she have gotten it? I'm going to find out. You mean Andrew? I don't mean anything. I just mean I'm going to find out I'm going to the hospital. Oh, Aaron, could I come with you, please? Well, you have to wait in the other room while I question him. Give it to her. When? The night she was murdered. Uh, Mr. Rodan, maybe I oughtn't to be questioning you in your present condition. Although the doc did say he was going to send you home tonight. Now, if you don't know what you're saying... I... Oh, I didn't kill the girl, Sheriff, and I know perfectly what I'm saying. I gave her that bit of bright work in return for uh, certain favors she did me over the past year. Favor? Not the kind you're thinking, Sheriff. Come on. Okay. You ever heard of Siebert Syndrome? Well, it's an offshoot of... Blackwater fever, the one form of malaria. They don't know anything about, really. And uh, once you got it, you got it forever. And the only time you know you had an attack is when you wake up after it's all over. 
I've had it for over a year now. What do you do about it? You take track pyrodone. It's the only thing that keeps it under control. Where do you get that? Here, at the hospital. Well, then Doc Juton would have known about it. No. Sheriff, I have an interesting aversion to my maladies being paraded around the town, being the subject of gossip in ballrooms and bathrooms. Ellie Burrafu used to bring me the medicine in the evening, a month's supply at a time. And those were the favors she did me in return for some money. And uh, the night she died, that locket. Mr. Rodan, are you telling me that Ellie brought you some medicine on the night she was murdered? That's right. What time? Oh, between 8 and 9 o'clock. Where was she went? I don't know. It was a pretty dress. It was uh, sort of brown, I think, with, uh, with checks. But she wasn't in a pleasured mood that night. She had something on her mind, it seemed like. So I gave the locket to Ellie, saying, here, maybe this will brighten you up a little. Did it? Not noticeably. But she thanked me, and I hung, hung it around her neck and closed the catch, and then she went away to get murdered. What did you do after Ellie left? Something stupid, Sheriff. Nothing. Nothing? I should have gone right back upstairs and taken two of the pills, but I didn't. I just sat there, thinking to myself, what, what a pretty girl Ellie Berifu was. Just sat there thinking. And, uh, man, the next thing I knew, I was taking a shower. And it was about 5 o'clock in the morning. Mr. Rodin, when you came home last evening after hunting, what'd you do then? I dined with my sister. And after that? I went straight to bed. It tired me out more than I thought that, huh? So I went to bed early. Couldn't have been later than nine. Slept the night. Without waking? Straight through to breakfast. And that's when I learned from my sister what had happened in the night to Lawrence Burrafu and your deputy. It was the same person, wasn't it, Sheriff? All these murders, they've been committed by the same person, haven't they? Well, it seems so. If there is a person that can tear iron bars out of a brick wall. Oh, yeah. Now, Mr. Rodan, you don't happen to be left-handed. I'm ambidextrous, Sheriff. I can sign my name with both hands at the same time, and it would take a handwriting expert to tell you the difference. You know, there have been five of us in my family who inherited that interesting trait from my great-great-grandfather. Yeah, take care, sir. Yeah. Oh, Miss Rodin, is Sheriff Whitaker still with you? Oh, there he is. Aaron, I can't get one person in this fear-ridden town to take this medication to old Hugh. If he breaks loose with one more spell of the Luca Rooks, it'll be the finish of it. I'll take it. A spell of the what? Uh, it's something the old man keeps saying in French. Nobody around here can understand it. I know French. You go with me? Of course. Miss Rodin. Doctor? I said he went to bed at night. Well, I know it was early. You know, he slept through the night. Well, I don't know. I, I dropped off about 11. Sarah, how is he? Sulfur. I smell sulfur. That's what it is. That's a sedative. <laughs> That's what people use to think. I know. Look at who? Yes. Jim. Look at who? Monsieur, qu'est-ce que vous dites? Monsieur, répétez ça, s'il vous plaît. Voilà. 
Tallanna. Le nuke rock. A presto. It's his dialect. Look, Rook. He's saying Lou Garou. Werewolf. He's saying werewolf. He says that I'm his next victim. He knows these Martians better than his own name, so I'm putting him in charge. And remember this. Andrew Rodance is out there, and he's turned into a wolf. And we got to find him and shoot him down like a wolf. Mr. Rodance, this isn't any place for you. Mayor, you're planning to hunt down my brother, hunt him down and shoot him like a wild animal? Miss Rodance, you shouldn't be here. Mayor, Mayor, he, he's sick. He has this illness. Don't you understand that? He has, the, he has these seizures. Miss Rodance, he had fangs coming two inches out of his mouth. Mayor, Mayor, listen to me. There, there are drugs. Hey, this here's his sister. How do we know she ain't gonna turn out to be some kind of a wolf? You shut up! Mayor, Mayor, listen to me. Finding him is one thing, but hunting him down and shooting him is another thing altogether. Now, this is a law enforcement matter. You organize this posse without any legal authority. I'm acting under authority vested in me by the Marsh Island Charter. Now, Tom Grimity's in charge now. Louise. Come on, Louise. Come on, boys. find him, but they're still at it. Aaron, Aaron, come in here. There's something I want you to see. What is it? Lycanthropy and lycanthrope-like diseases. What's lycanthropy? Werewolves. Oh, Louise, you don't believe it. That... What I believe, what I want to believe is that it's what Andrew said it was, a, a disease that you can take pills to control. But after what Dr. Druton said, and after what happened at the Burfu house, and Granddaddy's fits, and now this book. Let me see. I mean, the diseases resemble lycanthropy in some of its symptoms. 
These quasi-lycanthropic diseases are relatively harmless and easily controlled by a series of modern drugs. Well, that's what Andrew said it was, those pills. Lycanthropia veritum. True lycanthropy may also respond favorably to the same drugs for a time, and then the disease develops an immunity to the drug. In true lycanthropy, the victim's unit for the taste of blood turns him into a most powerful, dangerous, and deadly killer. Mythology has it that werewolves are repelled and rendered temporarily harmless by the smell of sulfur. And it is also recorded, though with no scientific basis whatever, that certain persons, sensitive sorcerers, exorcisers of evil, claim to be able to... No, no, go on. Go on, read it. Mythology. I'm not interested in mythology. Well, I am. Claim to be able to see the shape of a pentagram in the hand of the werewolf's next victim. Louise, it's 1972. I heard he looked into Lawrence's hand just before Andrew killed him. That's what Sarah said, but Sarah's a superstitious. He just looked into mine. Louise, he is your brother. Andrew is a... He's out there. It's in the barn. Stay right there. Aaron, he tore iron bars out of cement. If he was born in this house, maybe he'll have more respect. And after I leave, lock and shut of this door. And then go in there and lock and bolt that door. And don't leave the room. I don't know what I'll do when I find him, but it won't be what they'll do. Now, don't leave the room. Don't answer the door until you hear it's me, Aaron, saying it's me, all right? Aaron, if he has to be killed, not tear away. Rodan! Rodan! The destruction of the victim. And only two methods of destruction are known. Death by burning or death by shooting with bullets that have been blessed.
Oh, look. 